The CBC and its affiliated stations bring you the CTV Network production of the Grey Cup Game, 1962. Grey Cup game with the great Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the great Eastern champions, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And joining us on the vast network today is my partner, Pierre Pru, who will call the play-by-play -play for the French network. Pierre. Merci, John, et bonjour tout le monde qui me soit permis de vous souhaiter la plus cordiale bienvenue à cette classique annuelle de la Coupe Grey 1962, cet après-midi à Toronto entre les Tiger Cats de Hamilton et les Blue Bombers de Winnipeg. Hagberg uh, went down to catch a pass, and he didn't cut. He just ran straight out and ran downfield, and he seemed to be favoring his uh, injured ankle. I believe it was the left ankle. So perhaps uh, this will be a very key situation, and Roger Hagberg, who is the bomber uh, bread and butter man, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, as far as is known, are completely intact. There they are working out to your uh, broadcast right and our end zone camera. Brad, I think a lot of people are curious right now as to the numbers game that has been going on. That is, first of all, the number of people who have called for the weather forecast, and secondly, the number shuffling job that uh, Coach uh, Bud Grant of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers has been doing. And as you see them work in the background, if there are some numbers during the game that are not entirely familiar to you as the game progresses, don't be alarmed. It's simply that because of the injuries that Bud Grant is doing some juggling. For example, he will be going with uh, Frank Rigney, will be wearing number 71, that is to qualify him as a pass receiver and an offensive end. Farrell Funston will be wearing number 10, and we can only suspect that uh, they will be using Farrell Funston as a pass receiving halfback, and therefore he must wear a number under 40 in order to play in that backfield. And this has caused a, a lot of uh, uh, talk this week. And I did, might point out that while your picture there now is clear, with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, I got to say, unfortunately, that fog is starting to come in a little bit. And this is the thing that the weatherman said would happen. We didn't think it would. I can see out onto Lake Ontario, and it looks fairly clear out there. But while it has been hazy, it is getting just a little bit heavier. And I'm not quite as optimistic as I once was, Brad. Well, I think this will dispel any uh, comments of the fact that Vancouver uh, will have that unique distinction in Canada of being the foggiest city around this time of the year. It was, uh, you couldn't see across the field this morning or yesterday or the day before. Uh, as far as the temperatures are concerned, they're, they're tremendous. The field is dry. This morning, as we said, you couldn't see across the field. It lifted at about 10 o'clock this morning. And now there, uh, it is, as John mentioned, getting a bit hazy out there. And uh, what would the procedure be, John, if the fog should close in once the game got going? Well, Sid Holler explained on the pregame show that uh, they will go as long as they can to try to complete the game. If it gets so bad, they'll have to stop and just hope that it gets better. And if it becomes impossible, then, of course, they just have to call it and try to play it another day. If you look at the crowd out there, you, uh, 30, uh, the actual capacity for the Grey Cup game is 32,655, and tickets have been tougher to get uh, now than uh, any year I can remember. The uh, attendance record for a Grey Cup game, of course, is held in Vancouver. And that was in 1955 when they had 39,000 out for that game. The Hamilton Tiger Cats with number nine, their quarterback Joe Zuger still warming up his club. And that's the starting club. There's Jamie Caleb, number 30, uh, one of the late season arrivals and, uh, and a great halfback. And I'm sure is going to see a lot of action today as it's the big power boys who get the big test when you come to the final game of the year. Now the telecast of this great cup game is coming to you from Toronto. Hello, everybody. Steve Douglas here, and along with me to comment on today's Grey Cup game is Bernie Filoni, 
outstanding football player in Canada in 1961. The injured quarterback of the Hamilton Tie Cats unable to play today. Bernie, it seems like only yesterday, but I guess it's 10 or 11 years ago, you and I sort of teamed up at the University of Maryland. That's right, Steve. Uh, you were broadcasting the games there, and I was playing quarterback at the university then. And playing wonderfully, too, I must say. And out in Edmonton, I did the game, the first one that you played in, in the Grey Cup here in Toronto. 1954. That seems uh, a long time ago, too, Steve. I bet it does. What about that injured knee? What is the situation, Bernie? Well, Steve, it's coming along real well. The doctors say that it's a successful operation and that uh, as long as I give it a lot of time uh, and do a lot of physio exercises on it, that it's going to be well. And uh, I'm sure that I'll be ready for next year. All right, Bernie, we certainly hope so. We'll be talking to Bernie Foley throughout the ballgame. The... Uh... The referee, Paul Dojak, is now Great down there on the field with the respective captains and the officials are prepared to make the official coin toss. So let's go down to the field now and hear from the referee, Paul Dojak. Boy, they'll make the call and, of course, they will make a bum call. You'll have the choice. So, uh, we got a few minutes. The Hamilton team is the home team for the 1962 Grey Cup game as a result of having won the toss. Now, trying to figure out just what the advantage of the very slight wind might be is kind of difficult. I think that the disadvantage is that it's starting to bring that fog in off the lake. The uh, ceremony now having been completed, we will now... Uh, get on with the final warm-up sessions as the coin is tossed and the Hamilton Tiger Cats win it as he points to Captain Paul Decker along with the co-captain John Barrow and uh, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 53 is Herb Gray and 63 is Steve Patrick and so while that ceremony is just being completed let's move in with Al Shaver here now and get some pre-game comments from him Al uh, well, Johnny, I, I sure hope we get this one in it would be a shame to see a great cup have to uh, be postponed because of uh, weather conditions of any kind, but uh, things don't look too promising right at the moment. Uh, looking out across Lake Ontario there, and the, the mists are really starting to move in on CNE Stadium. We were out here about 8 o'clock this morning, Brad, and uh, it was beautiful out here then. The sun was shining, and the fog was well back out over the lake. And then in half an hour, to just come in here, and sitting up in the press box, you couldn't see the scoreboard at one end or the uh, TV tower at the other end. It was socked in real solid, and... Uh, it's, it's just amazing the way it can move in uh, almost, uh, well, with no warning at all. All of a sudden it's there, and uh, we certainly hope that it's not going to move in during this ball game today. If it doesn't, Johnny, I think we're going to see a real fine football game. Uh, if the Winnipeg Blue Bombers can hold up in this one, they, they are a little hurt, we understand, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see how, how serious it is. Well, just while we wait for this one, as Jim Trimble talks to the officials, let's take a look now and see some uh, Grey Cup highlights over the past years. Now, there's some great plays that'll take you back a few years and kind of set the stage for this one. Well, there's 1946, number 55, Joe Kroll throwing to his old partner, Royal Copeland, and a Toronto Argonaut touchdown. We're now in 1949, Montreal Alouettes at Calgary Stampeders, and Frank Filchot lets one go. Number 55, Bobby Cunningham, who's now the golf pro out at St. George's. Watch him. He takes that. And here's old Chess McCants, the late Chess McCants, kicking off. Give you an idea of the condition of the field out there. Watch that ball skip. And there's a fan gets in on the act. Beautiful block by the referee. Paul Rowe picks up the ball. Remember Paul Rowe? You want to see a power runner? Take a look at one. You don't arm tackle Paul Rowe. you got to get in front of him. And even then, it doesn't help too often. There was another great game, 25, 28-15. And here's the mud bowl of 1950, Al Dechtebrun, throwing a pitch out to Teddy Toogood. Toogood looks like he's getting away, and they give you an idea of how bad that field was. Watch these fellas, what is it they say, <laughs> slud through? <laughs> That's all mud there. And there's Pete Petro coming in with a brand-new uniform. Nice run there by George McPhail. Watch this little guy scoot. He wasn't very big, but, well, he could go. And I thought there was a Winnipeg offside on that play. 
And I think it turned out there was. Rod Smiley makes that flying tackle to avert a touchdown. That was 13 nothing for the Toronto Argonauts there in 1950. And there's 1953 in that play. Did Tom Casey get it? And here's the play in stop action. Now, did he touch the ball before he was hit or didn't? I kind of think it was a bit of a time the defense gets the advantage. That was a 12-6 ball game for Winnipeg. And here we are in 1961, the overtime. Number 11, watch him. Whoop, nobody to throw to, let's go. And watch this beautiful piece of running as Kenny Plain goes for the touchdown that defeated the Hamilton Tiger Cats in 1961. Yeah, those old pros, they still throw that ball up in the air when they get the big one, don't they, Johnny? <laughs> they sure do. And I imagine that uh, even these old pros are just as excited uh, playing in this 1962 Grey Cup game as many of the rookies who are playing in their first real big one. Well, now let's go from the past Grey Cup games and go to this one again to find out what these two teams look like statistically. The uh, Gordy Walker has made a comparison here for you. Let's see what it means. Well, this is how the average game during the season worked out for Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Right up at the very top, you'll see the average score. Winnipeg won by an average of 24 to 18. Hamilton won this game 25 to 20 on an average. In first downs, it's very close. The Bombers averaged 18 and a half first downs a game. The Tiger Cats, 18.9. Yards rushing, Bombers had a little bit of an edge here. They rushed for an average of 163 yards per game, Hamilton 154. In passing, Winnipeg averaged 11.3 completions out of 18.8 passes thrown for 178 yards. Hamilton averaged just about half of the 25 passes they threw for 214 yards. Interceptions were about half an interception per game edge for the Tiger Cats, as you can see there. Fumbles also were fairly even. The Bombers made about half a fumble a game more than Hamilton and recovered the same by the same margin. Penalties, Winnipeg averaged 5.3 penalties a game for 31.2 yards. Hamilton, seven penalties a game for 65.2 yards. Punting, Hamilton has a slight edge, a 43.4 yard average for 8.8 .8 punts. Winnipeg, 41.8 yards for eight and a half punts per game. Field goals tried, also fairly even. Winnipeg completed three quarters of their field goal attempt, and Hamilton, 86% of the uh, field goal tried. Individual here in scoring, Jerry James was uh, Winnipeg's leading scorer with 116 points. Don Southern topped Hamilton with 78. And passing, Kenny Plain gained 2,097 yards. Joe Zuger, 1,070. And you can see the rushing figures for Bobby Kuhn and Leo Lewis. And the last two lines are the top pass receivers. Johnny? Very well done, uh, Gord. And I think this gives the folks a little way to sit and compare these two clubs. Uh, both have great records, but if you like to go for the statistics, there's your opportunity. And as the majorettes perform, uh, the telecast of this Grey Cup game is coming to you from Toronto. The CBC and its affiliates are pleased to bring you the 1962 Grey Cup game through the courtesy of the British American Oil Company Limited, refiners of 88 and 98 gasolines. Now, for those of you who came in late this morning at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Commissioner Halter and CFL President Jake Goddard decided to go ahead with today's Grey Cup game in spite of the possibility that fog might come back in and they'd have to make a snap decision perhaps during the game. Bernie Filoni, what does the uncertainty involving the terrible fog conditions here overnight and now the possibility that they might even have to stop the game and play the balance of it tomorrow, what does this do to a ball player? Well, I think the uncertainty of not being able to play on time, Steve, sort of lends a little bit of uneasiness to a ball club and the very fact that they may have to call the ball club in the ball game in the middle of the game or when there's seven minutes to go and <laughs> the score is say 14 to 14 and a second down what's going to happen uh, this uh, sort of makes a ball club really feel uneasy as to whether or not they're going to get the game finished and I think that perhaps uh, today though we're going to be better and, and get the game finished 
The optimistic Mr. Bernie Filoni and, gee, we, uh, all of us football fans hope so. As the dancing majorettes perform, the crowd continues to pile in to the CNE Stadium. And uh, I suppose in the past, if some of the fans have kept that second half of their ticket as a souvenir, about 100% of them will be keeping them today, not so much as a souvenir, but as a rain check, just in case uh, this ball game has to be postponed. And we'll keep giving you these weather reports. We hope it doesn't sound repetitious or get monotonous, but we know that uh, you are vitally interested uh, because we will be getting closer shots on the field with our lenses than the folks in the stands here that fog happens to come in. Uh, thus the reason for the repetition of the, uh, the weather reports. The uh, temperature right now is 49 degrees and there's just a slight wind. At halftime, too, I might point out that you'll see all the majorettes and the bands and a, and a great halftime show uh, from the field. John, if, that, uh, if today's game had have been postponed because of the weather, uh, I believe it would have been the first time in Grey Cup history that such an incident has occurred, and the likelihood arose that the game would have to be played on Sunday. And further to that, in the event the fog persisted on Sunday, the game would have been played on Monday. So this could have been a real long weekend for all the out-of-towners who came down to see the game. I don't know, Brad. Uh, from all the hooping and hollering around the Royal York Hotel there last night, I don't think they got any stamina left. I don't think they could uh, carry on another day. There were some uh, pretty bleary-eyed people I noticed around the lobby there this morning. Well, perhaps uh, Toronto is uh, becoming used to it, or I don't know what it was, but we've been out here since Tuesday, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday were a very quiet night. There is Miss Gray Cup. Miss Renata Pekalis, Miss Ottawa Rough Rider, and acclaimed as Miss Grey Cup last night. And uh, if these Grey Cups are getting harder to win, the only thing that's more difficult to choose is Miss Grey Cup. I, I've never seen so many beautiful girls in one contest, Duke. Johnny, we had no trouble picking her. Remember, we had her on our show out of Ottawa, and we told her if she doesn't win it, the thing is fixed. <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful girl, and... Uh, I think, uh, Johnny, in selecting Miss Grey Cup, even, uh, it's more than just the uh, beauty. This this gal, I remember, she told us she uh, took up ballet and uh, could still speak Latvian. I tried Lithuanian on her, but she came back in Latvian to uh, uh, befuddle me just as much as I befuddled her. Stuke, what were you saying about uh, Roger Hagberg not playing? Yeah, they're getting the official announcement from the Winnipeg dressing room right now. Uh, that Roger Hagberg will not dress. Uh, Miss Grey Cup is now being presented to Jake Goddard, the president of the Canadian Football League. And this uh, lucky young lady will be driving home in a car all her own. We also might point out... Hey, let's, let's just take another moment here and get a close look at this. A uh, beautiful young lady. As Bill Westwick, uh, the Ottawa Journal, said last night, well, we didn't win any football titles, but uh, maybe this is just as happy that we should have the Miss Grey Cup title going back there at Ottawa. And I say, Bill, you, you have reason to be proud. That word that just came up from Roger Hagberg, that he will not play, I think uh, that you Winnipeg fans will... I'd be unhappy to hear that, and I think the other word is that uh, Garland Warren will not play, and those are two big starters for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Maybe Jim Trimble knew this all the time, and thus uh, his reason for exuding confidence right from the beginning. The two Johnny that got uh, Gordy Rowland, I saw him downstairs a little while ago. He's got a big cast on that one ankle. It's uh, not in very good shape at the moment. Looks like Barbara Ann Scott a little bit, doesn't she? <laughs> Wasn't she from Ottawa, too? They all look the same down there. Well, I would like to uh, point out, while we have a moment here, that the referee for today's game is Paul Dojak from Regina. The number one umpire is Seymour Wilson from Hamilton. The number two umpire is Bill Nairn from Winnipeg. The number three umpire is Norm Maxwell from Hamilton. The headlinesman is Jim Piper from Edmonton, and the field judge is Ray Boucher from Ottawa. And there are the officials, six of them in today's game, uh, in a regular league game, East and West. We use uh, 
only five, but in the Grey Cup game, they had one more umpire. I will have to say, too, that this is the best turf for the best gridiron that a professional football final has been played on. I've never seen uh, a field at this stage of the game, the 1st of December, in as good a condition as this, Brad. Well, I was going to say, did you catch any of the games out of the coast <laughs> in the last few years? We've had some pretty good uh, conditions out there, and the field, of course, the grass is green 12 months a year in British Columbia. I know Steve Owen is out on the field, and he has been selected as the coach of the year and the winner of the Anna Stukas Trophy. The ceremony you see now is the referee, Paul Dojak, who is checking the official 30 players that will be allowed to play in today's game. And these must go to the official timer. And uh, at, from this point on, no change can be made. Those 30 names that are in there now are the only 30 games, uh, 30 names who can take part in this 1962 Grey Cup Classic. I might point out, too, we just have word that uh, 10,000 letters one-line letters have come as a result of C.J. Wise promotion in Winnipeg uh, on behalf of the Winnipeg Blue Bomber fans trying to spur this club on over what they think uh, are physical obstacles as a result of the pound they took from that uh, great Calgary Stampeder football club. And uh, knowing what a psychologist Bud Grant is in preparing for a ball game, I know that he will certainly welcome that kind uh, of additional inspiration. He sure will, Johnny. And uh, the Winnipeg fans have been notorious over a great many years for really backing their bombers in any series. I can uh, remember back in 57, the year they uh, ended Edmonton's three-year reign as Western champions. For the final game of that series in Winnipeg, they not only had telegrams, and when they send telegrams down there, they measure them in terms of lengths of the football field. In other words, it would be about four lengths, which would be about 440 yards. And uh, that's the way they were rolling in all day. I think everybody in Winnipeg got his John Henry on uh, those wires and came in. And they had fans down there. They're a, they're a great city with tremendous spirit. And they're always behind the bombers, no matter what the situation is. And uh, I know the bombers themselves won't be letting them down here today if they can help it. The Hamilton Tiger Cats are getting ready to be introduced to the crowd. And uh, unfortunately for all the Hamilton fans, their big rally last night, they had expected 20,000 people, but it was completely fogged out. And uh, you all remember the big pep rally last year that uh, turned out to be quite an event. And uh, this, of course, is a psychological weapon that Jim Trimble was hoping to use. But uh, he had to bow to the fog. As a matter of fact, Jim couldn't even get through the fog to get to the Grey Cup uh, dinner, and uh, therefore it was, became the first time that Bud Grant spoke for Jim Trimble and himself, and I, and I have to say that he did uh, a mighty fine job of that. The Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, a club that uh, came on in the uh, regular campaign, looked for a while as though they might have their problems, but they, they wound up, they recovered from the loss of Bernie Filoni with the great Late season finish from mid-season on by Joe Zuger and a great backup man in Frank Cosentino. They wound up with nine wins, four losses, and a tie for a total of 19 points. And that was six better than the Ottawa Rough Riders who finished in second place. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers, playing in the toughest Western Conference, I'm sure, ever, wound up with 11 wins and five losses for 22 points. And that was just uh, three better than the Calgary Stampeders with Saskatchewan finishing second with 17. And now let's meet the Hamilton Tiger Cats as they are introduced to this uh, huge throng. Big Ron Ray, number 66, who will be playing a defensive left end for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. He's a 248-pounder from Detroit Lions. Angelo Mosca, who came back to the Hamilton Tiger Cats today, playing a defensive tackle, 265 pounds. And John Barrow, the outstanding lineman of the year in Canadian football, one who has a great record. He's been an all-star in each of his six years in the Canadian football. Bob Minahane, number 64, defensive right tackle. And uh, big Bob Minahane, the 23-year-old, 244-pounder. Pete Newman, number 74, who uh, has had his 11th year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and it was to him that John Barrow uh, 
uh, credited the great the, the reason why Barrow himself could win the Outstanding Lineman Award. Here's Zeno Kars, all-star linebacker, playing on that uh, left corner for the Tiger Cats, a 200-pounder in his seventh year, formerly from Windsor. Sam Fernandez, number 25, the middle linebacker from Miami, and Fernandez, a 200-pounder, 22 years of age. Here comes Gary Schreider, number 12, who will be playing on that right corner. This is his seventh year in professional football. And now one of the all-time great halfbacks defensively in the Eastern Conference, number 22. Don Southern from the Hamilton Tiger Cats, formerly with the New York Giants and Pittsburgh Steelers, now in his third year. Here comes number 21 for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Ralph Goldston playing in his 11th year of professional football, four with Philadelphia, seven with Hamilton. Number 18, Tommy Grant, formerly a junior star at Windsor, a 200-pounder, a seven-year veteran. He ran a kickoff back 105 yards this year. Here comes number 26, Gonnie Henley, who has to be one of the really great ones. He goes both ways so well, it's hard to win an award in any one department. So those are your Hamilton Tiger Cats who will be playing in this game defensively this afternoon. And next, we are going to meet the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and here come the defending Grey Cup champions, the Western Conference champions, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, number 43, George Druxman from uh, University of Portland. And uh, uh, Druxman is playing in his eighth year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Here comes number 55, Sherwin Thorson. He'll be playing at offensive left guard. This uh, big lad, uh, Thorson, goes in there at about uh, 225 pounds. He will also replace Garland Warren as a linebacker. Here comes number 54, Rod Humanuck. And uh, Rod Humanuck is a uh, big boy in there. He goes in there at 230 as well. Here comes Frank Rigney wearing number 71. Now, Rigney, uh, the outstanding lineman last year, played a little bit of end occasionally, but because of the problem of uh, catching passes today, they have made him an end and juggled the backfield. Cornell Piper, number 64, offensive right tackle. Here comes Farrell Funston, number 74, who really stars, stands in with those great clutch catches in Grey Cup games. Here's number 77, Ernie Pitts, the offensive right end, and uh, Ernie Pitts playing in his sixth year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. 29, certainly one of the really great halfbacks, number 29, Leo Lewis. Lewis, uh, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, is in his eighth year. Here comes number 21, Charlie Shepard. And Shepard, a six-year veteran of the Bombers at 215 pounds from North Texas State. And Jerry James, who moves into the starting backfield at the fullback slot. Number 28, Jerry James, who is playing in his 10th year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, uh, only 27 years of age. And here comes Ron Latterell. Remember him, how this little number 31 starred in the game last year. Also number 11, Kenny Plain, who really starred in the Grey Cup game last year. Therefore, you have the offensive unit, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and the rest of the team filing out there onto the field. Well, it's not going to be long now. These two clubs are going to be meeting uh, head-on as the haze continues to settle in here at the CNE Stadium. And as the officials are now being announced, have met once apiece. Here comes the official party with uh, Prime Minister Diefenbaker, who will perform the official kickoff ceremony. And that, of course, will be followed by our anthems and then followed by the official kickoff to by the teams who actually get the game underway. And uh, we might point out, too, that for the 190 stations who are carrying the game today, uh, on ABC, and the, they asked for a number of things, but first of all, they asked for the official party with the Prime Minister to be escorted by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They, they felt they must have the Mounted Police in on the official kickoff party because this is what all of our friends across the line are asking for. Well, the fog is uh, coming in a little bit heavier now, and uh, gosh, I, I don't know what to say. You, uh, as you watch the official party come out now, uh, the fog is coming in just a little bit heavier now. I don't know whether we're going to wind up with uh, no passing or no kicking or maybe a running game to keep the ball on the ground. The wind is only five miles an hour, but it is just enough to be blowing that fog in off the lake, coming right into the CNE.
The Hamilton Tiger Cats have 10 players in their roster today who were not with them in the 1961 Grey Cup. They have five first year men, that is five rookies. And when you look at the whole Hamilton club, it averages uh, five years. In other words, they average five years experience as Hamilton Tiger Cat players. We're getting ready for the official kickoff now. Miss Gray Cup uh, introduced to the Prime Minister and uh, Mayor Lloyd Jackson of uh, Hamilton and his worship Mayor Nathan Phillips of Toronto. I see Alderman Peter Taraska representing Mayor Juba from uh, Winnipeg along with Jake Goddard, the president of the Canadian Football League, among others included in the uh, official party here this afternoon. Well, now let's see what kind of a, a kickoff uh, a record we're going to have. Party here this afternoon. Well, now let's see what kind of a, a kickoff uh, a record we're going to have for the official kickoff. <laughs> I hope he lifts it. We've got some cross signals down there on the field. Uh, I think they expect the anthem to be played before the kickoff is the way we were told it was going to happen. And I think they're just waiting to get their signals straightened out on the field right now. Now you see the color guard approaching. not an empty seat in the stands. They're jamming them in the corners. I don't know what...
The official kickoff, that is the official record according to Ray Statistician Gord Walker, the Prime Minister kicked off 14 and a half yards and there was no run back. Now the telecast of this game, the Great Cup game, is coming to you from Toronto. We are glad to acknowledge our thanks to the British American Oil Company Limited, refiners of 88 and 98 gasolines, who have very kindly made rights available so that we may bring you the first half of the 1962 Grey Cup game. On your behalf and for the CBC, I would like to thank them for their courtesy. It is almost game time, Grey Cup 62. Let's see what Bernie Filoni has to say in assessing both clubs on offense and defense. Bernie? Well, let's take Winnipeg's offense first, Steve, and I feel that they, uh, they've they made a few changes. They dropped Roger Hagberg, and they put James back in that backfield, and I don't know whether this is going to strengthen them or not. Uh, I believe Hagberg is uh, quite a good runner, inside runner. Their overall offense isn't going to be changing too much. They may be running a little bit like the Hamilton offense where they have the twin and now the tackle eligible play. The Hamilton offense certainly uh, is not going to change much from the playoff situations. All right, now we all know and you know because you've played defense that defense wins many ball games. Let's go on that one. Yes, I think today will be a real defensive battle because the Hamilton Tiger Cat line is the best in the Hamilton Tiger Cat history, if not the best in the East. And uh, I know that the defensive line for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers hasn't changed much at all. And uh, Aside from the fact that maybe a few breaks uh, on kicks or pass interceptions, uh, this defensive ball game is going to be probably one of the outstanding in all Grey Cup history. Well, Bernie, it's kind of surprising because so many people say that this is going to be a high-scoring ball game, and the Thai Cats have been favored by as much as eight points. But we're going to see in just a very few seconds. So go with us to the CNE Stadium, Grey Cup 62. Well, as the teams are regrouped just before the kickoff, uh, we might point out that it's the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with Jerry James who will kick off. And back to receive for the Hamilton Tiger Cats going right down there in the end zone is number 18, Tommy Grant, and number 30, Jamie Caleb. Now, we can just make them out down there on the goal line, so anything can happen here this afternoon. There is Jerry James, the left-footed kicker with number 31, Ron Latterell, you're going to expect Latterell to be down near the kick. Here's the whistle. The game is underway, and there goes the kick. It comes down to Caleb on the 25-yard line, up to the 30, the 35, hit by Norm Rawhouse, and dropped on the 37-yard line. So the 1962 Grey Cup game is now underway. For the Hamilton Tiger Cats, there's Joe Zuger, number nine. And he has Chet Mixon, number 46, at his offensive center. Dave Vitti, 73, at right end. Paul Decker at left end, or switch those around, but he's actually a flanker. Easterly number 20 on the right side. And we have Garney Hanley going in motion. The handoff is to Bobby Kuntz. Kuntz is piled up just over the line of scrimmage. And the first man in there to get him was number 62, the defensive left tackle Roger Savoy, a 12-year veteran of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It'll be second down and eight and a half yards to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton... 39-yard line. Henley, 26 out to the right, Easterly out there as well. 30, Caleb Kuntz, 23, as Zuger drops back in there to throw, looking down this left side to Hal Patterson, number seven. He's hit in there and uh, covered by Henry Jansen, number 32, and it goes incomplete. It'll now be third down. Eight and one-half yards to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton 39-yard line. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers will send back number 31, Ron Latterell, and number 32, Henry Jansen to receive. Zuger will kick from the Hamilton 24-yard line. There is the snap. And the boot by Joe Zuger. And waiting under it there is uh, Jansen. He takes it on the 31, puts his head down to the 32-yard line, and he's dropped on the 32 by Gino DeNoble. Number 62 and 73, Dave Vitti. A 41-yard boot and a three-yard run back. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers now line up offensively as number 11, Kenny Plain. will come in to quarterback the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Hamilton lining up defensively. We'll give you those in a moment. 
There's the Winnipeg Blue Bomber offensive huddle. 77 Pitts at right end. And 71 Rigney at left end. Funston actually is split off as a flanker. And Charlie Shepard is flanked wide to the right with lateral. Here's Kenny Plain going back to throw. He's hit back there and dropped by John Barrow on the 23-yard line. They rule that he was stopped on the 25. There's a flag on the play. Offside against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Well, there was uh, something we're going to find out about that Hamilton ball club. Now, this was definitely a long pass pattern. All the receivers were going deep. Kenny Plain held on that extra two seconds, and you could see that big rush by that Hamilton club. Uh, notice they come in from the outside, sort of boxed off to make sure that Plain couldn't go outside. And this is something they have to be aware of. The loss of seven yards in the play is second down and 17 yards to go. Lateral, 31, goes to the top of your screen. Shepard and James, the fullbacks in tight. They go back into a fake quick kick. Now it's going to be a quick kick. And there goes a boot by Charlie Shepard. Tommy Grant going back. It's over his head to the 30. He slips and falls. And uh, having to give him five yards is Cornell Piper. Then he drops him on the 35-yard line. And Charlie Shepard uh, was shaken up on the play after the quick kick. He was hit, and uh, he is going off the field. See that? You know, as you know, Johnny, it's not legal to hit the uh, the kicker, but as Shepard approached the line of scrimmage, this is where the, the defensive club can hit him. They nailed him at the line of scrimmage. First and ten for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Zuga rolling out to his right. Chased there by Rogers. Savoy. The pass is no good. Intended by Jamie Kaler. A big rush put on him there by Roger Savoy. And the pass goes incomplete. It'll be second down. Ten yards to go. For the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton 36 yard line. Now, Hal Patterson wearing number seven to become uh, a backfielder. Normally he would wear 77, but in the last game they changed that. Taking a look at the uh, Hamilton Club as they break out over the huddle on a second and ten situation, and Joe Zuger rolling out to his left, blocking from Ellison Kelly, throwing long here to Dave Vitti, and he's got no, he dropped it. Dave Vitti being covered there by Kenny Plain. The ball rolls loose, but uh, Hal Patterson goes after it just in case it happens to be a loose ball. Patterson stopped for a moment. He saw Kenny Plain chase the ball just in case it should be ruled as a free ball. Uh, the referee was going down to pick it up. Patterson hit the referee in attempting to get to the ball, knocked his whistle flying, but it was ruled dead. Well, anytime these football players see a ball lying around loose, you they might have had the impression that Beattie had a hold of it long enough, completed pass, fumble. They see that ball loose. They didn't hear a whistle. They just kept on playing it. Joe Zuger going back to his own 20-yard line to do the punting for Hamilton. Good snap from Mixer. It's a bit of a wobble on it, and Jansen has to rush up to take it on the 40. Fakes the reverse, goes in the middle. Hit hard by Gino DeNovo. Number 62 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and he is dropped on the 43-yard line. Old Vince Scott. 13-year veteran of the Cats was in there to make sure he didn't go any farther. That was a 34-yard boot, a four-yard run back. And we have 12 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the opening quarter of play. And there's no score. Winnipeg Blue Bombers have uh, done a little bit of, well, they're going to have to do some more juggling, evidently. Because we now have Joe Williams, number 22 in the offensive backfield to replace Charlie Shepard. James... Number 28 flanks to the top of the screen. And uh, here is Leo Lewis to the 45, trying to pick his way. He's into the 52-yard line and driven out. He fumbled the ball, but he was in the touch at this point. And it was Ralph Goldston who drove him out. On the 48-yard line, and that will be a gain of five yards. It is second down and five to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Winnipeg 48. There's the Hamilton defense being called by number 61, John Barrow, who can line up as a middle guard, as a linebacker, or as a defensive end. It's his choice. Second down, five to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they're changing uh, their offensive setup on every play now. Here's Kenny Plain throwing down there to Ernie Pitts. No good. Pitts had the first down pass, but he was hit there by Ralph Goldston and Garney Henley. And uh, he just couldn't hold on to that ball. 
Well, I'll tell you, uh, indications are here, but I don't know how long some of these boys are going to last. Johnny, it's been a long while since I've seen tackling like we've had in the early minutes of this ball game. Third down and five. And Don Southern with uh, Tommy Grant will go back to receive for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Jack Delvo, number 23, comes in to do the booting for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers from the 35. Remember how he stepped into the breach last year? Don Southern at the 20. Being chased here by Frank Rigney. Gets up to the 25. Keeps going to the 28-yard line. The telecast of this Grey Cup game is coming to you from Toronto. Forty-two yard boot, a nine-yard return, and Joe Zuger sends out uh, Henley and Easterly to the right. Now they bring Henley back around to the opposite side and hand off to Bobby Coots. Hit there by Steve Patrick, the middle guard, and he drags him down on the 36-yard line. There's Bobby Coots, who picked up a big 166 yards against the Alouettes in the second game of the Eastern Final, and uh, Coots finished second in the Eastern rushing this year behind the record-setting George Dixon. Second down and two to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton 36-yard line. Caleb is out to the right this time. They keep Koontz in with Henley. They hand off to Henley, a quick opener into the 45. Keeps going to the far side, the 55, the 40. And there's only one man who can get him in there. And it's going to have to be Jack Delvo and Henry Jansen. And he is over for the touchdown. Jamie Caleb, number 30, through the key block, who set it up for Johnny Henley, who came back in and went 74 yards for the touchdown. Well, we've got to hand a lot of credit to his blockers down there. That was a beautiful piece of teamwork. Only a fellow like Henley, a quick-thinking kid out there, he just used them every foot of the way. He seemed to be caught two or three times, went in for the sideline, cut back in toward the center of the field, did a perfect job of setting up the block for his men. Beautiful exhibition of blocking. Here's that convert coming up, John. Don Southern, number 22, is wide. He's wide and to the right. So it is a 6 nothing ball game with 10 minutes and 9 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Hamilton on top, 6 to nothing, And it was Garney Henley who broke off tackle and went 74 yards with some great blocking, as Stu told you. Henry Jansen and Jack Delbo, the last two men, try to drive him out at about the five. You know, the thing about uh, blocking, uh, that halfback with the ball can really help his blockers with the right moves, and we saw an example there as Henley just moved in to set up the tackler for the block uh, by the man he had ahead of him. Beautiful example of teamwork. Here's the kickoff by Don Southern, and back under it for the... Blue Bombers is Leo Lewis up to the 25-yard line. Look at his turn of speed. Gets by. Oh, he slips and falls on the 35 and is driven out on the 36-yard line. Dave Vitti was over to get him. A 54-yard boot, a 25-yard run back. Lewis, who was one of the most feared men in that run back department, had that corner made had he not slipped and fallen. It is first and 10 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Winnipeg 36-yard line. Cornell Piper, 64 at right tackle. Forson, 55 at guard. Humanic, 54 at the other guard spot. And we have just under 10 minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Lewis flanks out wide to the right with Ron Latterell. Uh, Williams goes in motion. Plane rolls out to the right. Looking down this right side to Lewis, and he can't get it. Lewis is being covered by number 15, Zeno Carson. 21, Ralph Goldston. But it wasn't there. So the Bombers are now without Charlie Shepard, and we don't know if he'll be back in. He's trying to work out that leg muscle of his on the sideline, and I suspect that old Charlie will be back in this ballgame. He'll grow a new leg by the second half. Second down and 10 to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on their own 36-yard line. Kenny Plain set an all-time passing record in the West this year, completing 65%. Now we go second and 10, and they've been throwing a lot this afternoon. Plain rolling out to his right out here on the right side. Held Ron Lateral, and he can't hold on. There's a flag on the play. Back at the line of scrimmage, and a little bit of rough play going on. Well, 
Well, there's a uh, play that has been uh, carrying those blue bombers. Remember Lateral last year with that same type of play? He he made life miserable for those Hamilton Tiger Cats. And the referee pointed out that somebody following through threw an elbow, which is roughing. Actually, I think they rule that as roughing the passer on that play. And this gives them a 15-yard move to the 51-yard line where it is first and 10 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I'm glad to report that fog is dissipating a little bit. First and 10, Winnipeg, and they've got backs in motion this time. They hand to Leo Lewis trying to slide off tackle. He keeps fighting into the 52-yard line before he is piled up. Got a great block there from Cornell Piper, number 64, his right tackle. And then Minahane, 64, came from the opposite side to finally pull him down. Along with Ron Ray, number 66. Eight minutes, 36 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Six to nothing for Hamilton on Garney Henley's 74-yard touchdown. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are second down and two to go on the Hamilton 52-yard line. Lewis, thanks to the top of your screen, number 29. Pitts is split off the right end. They hand to Ron Lateral, and Lateral hit there by Pete Newman, the defensive right end, who was set up for that one along with Gary Schreider, number 12, in that right corner. And they hold the Blue Bombers to make it third down and two to go. Tommy Grant will be one of those receivers back there along with Don Southern. And there you see 22 Don Southern back uh, about the goal line. And Jack Delvo will be booting from the Winnipeg 46. Six to nothing for Hamilton. There's a snap from George Druxman, the boot from Delvo. It's a wobbler off the side of his foot. And this could go out. It does, and it goes out right on the 25-yard line. Funny, we just got word. Booted his first and ten Hamilton on the Hamilton 25 yard line. Zuga rolling out to his right behind the protection of Puritan, and it is no good. Dick Corner, number 14, went up in the air, had his hand on it, not enough to catch it, and it goes incomplete. Al Patterson was the intended receiver. Second down and ten to go on the 25 yard line. Notice uh, so far most of the passes have all been out to the sideline. I wonder if both these quarterbacks have got something in mind. Zuga, in particular, you know, that Hamilton club can pass down the middle pretty well and watch out for something coming up there. Norm Rawhouse, the safety man, is almost up in the line of scrimmage now. Here goes Zuger being chased into that pocket. He's throwing deep there to Dick Easterly, and it goes incomplete. <laughs> Dick Easterly, number 20, a late-season arrival from uh, University of Syracuse, got five touchdown passes in his first four games. And he turned around and suggested maybe somebody help push him down to the ground and not up to the ball as he tried to catch that one. So we're back to a third and ten situation for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton 25-yard line. And once again, Joe Zuger will go back to the, well, he usually likes about 15 yards back there. And there he is on the ten. He gets a wobbler, a low one, and it's going to take a hop to Henry Jansen back on his own 42. Beats the first tackler, and he's hit hard again. And once again, it's Gino DeNovo down there to meet Henry Jansen. You know, this kid Jansen has got to be one of the toughest little guys I've ever seen around. Either that or he's made out of India rubber. 42-yard boot, a two-yard run back. Uh, Gino DeNovo goes in there at 230. Henry Jansen goes in at 185. So far, it's been a standoff. First and ten for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. On the Winnipeg 45-yard line, Hamilton leading six to nothing, six and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Kenny Plain back into that pocket, the rush by Gary Schreider, and he pulls him down on the 39-yard line. Gary Schreider, number 12, formerly from Ottawa, laterally with BC and now with Hamilton, setting outside of Pete Newman. And uh, he circled the blocker and came back in from behind to catch Pete Newman, or at least to catch uh, Kenny Plain after Newman had held up that side. That's the second time Plain has been thrown for a loss this afternoon. It is now second down and 15 to go. 
Charlie Shepard is back in the ball game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And uh, here's Plain rolling out to his left this time. Going a long one down here to Leo Lewis, and he can't get it. Down on the 40-yard line, the Hamilton 40. And back there to cover was number 18, Tommy Grant. It'll be third down and 15 yards to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. With five minutes, 58 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, and Hamilton leading six to nothing. Well, eight passes have been thrown in this ball game, and both have been, or at least all have been incomplete. Both teams have been unsuccessful in throwing a pass. Hamilton's thrown five. Third down and 15 to go, and Shepard from the 30, and he pounds a dandy. We almost lose that one up in the fog. Back under his ground on the 20 to the 25, into the 30-yard line, and he's dropped on the 30. The telecast of this great cup game is coming to you from Toronto. Hamilton Tiger Cats on their own 31-yard line following that boot, and Joe Zuger flipping to the fullback, Bobby Koontz, and Koontz is hit on the 35 and rolls into the 37-yard line as Dave Burkholder, number 52, is in there to get him. Second down, two and a half yards to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats as Winnipeg sets up defensively. They're crossing their halfbacks, and the handoff to Bobby Koontz, who dives into the 44-yard line, and uh, he has the first down. Nick Miller, number 24, came over to make the tackle. And we have a first and 10 for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton 43-yard line. It's doubtful if any quarterback broke into the league with more impact than Joe Zuger, set a Canadian record with eight touchdown passes in that first game. First and ten, halfback flanking wide, and they've seen more of it. There's the uh, flag on the play as Hamilton is offside. Here's Garney, at least uh, Zuga rolling out. Henley throwing a block, and he moves into the 54-yard line, stopped by Kenny Plain, the safety man. But the Hamilton Tiger Cats were offside. The game that was good for very close to nine has been wiped out, and we have uh, the referee Paul Dojak from Regina. We also have another change in here following that, and this is Don Southern coming into the backfield to replace Jamie Caleb. Caleb uh, was the offside man on that last play, and Jim Trimble calls him to the bench to explain something to him. There you have Joe Zuger. There, there you have a look now at Caleb and uh, Jim Trimble. It is first down over again, 15 yards to go for the Tiger Cats on their own 38-yard line. Don Southern flanks wide to the left, Easterly is in motion. The handoff to Koontz, and Koontz hits the 40 and is finally stopped there by Dave Burkholder. Winnipeg was offside on that play. You know, Jim Trimble and Bud Grant are making their fifth the Grey Cup appearances, and that ties... Lou Heyman, Billy Hughes, and Mike Rodden, along with Reg Threlfall, uh, for appearances. Heyman is the only undefeated one in the five appearances, with Argos uh, three times, uh, RTF Hurricanes, and the Montreal Alouettes. First down over again. Now it's 10 yards to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on their own 43-yard line. Quick pitch on the left side to Bobby Coons. Puts his head down. Hit by Jack Delvo, number 23. Three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Hamilton leading by a score of six to nothing. And uh, I wonder if many players have played as many positions as this Jack Delvo since he joined the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's a defensive end right now. Easterly left. Bobby, or at least Garney Henley rolling right. Bobby Coots throws the block. The pass is then for No good. And that Zuger is rifling that ball, Stu. That's the thing I've noticed, John. I'm just going to make a point of it. Where uh, in the other games, he was laying the thing up, throwing it pretty hard. He's getting that arm back there now and letting it go like a slingshot. You know, you wonder about these kids uh, playing in front of big crowds down in college ball. But this is still the Grey Cup game. This is a rookie quarterback. I can see that he's just giving it a little extra. He could take 
come off that high, hard one that he's been letting go. Well, there's our end zone camera letting you watch that ball come out from center in the snap to Joe Zuger. Zuger gets his best one away, and uh, Jansen goes back to his own 13-yard line, cuts back into the 16, goes to the 20, and is hit on the 20-yard line. Angelo Mosca, number 68, in to make the tackle with 16, Ken Kilray. Winner drive. That was a 51-yard boot by Joe Zuger, who led all U.S. college punters last year in that department, as well as interceptions. Now we've got Hal Ledger. That was a 51-yard boot by Joe Zuger, who led all U.S. college punters last year in that department, as well as interceptions. Now we've got Hal Ledger coming in to the Winnipeg Blue Bomber offensive unit. Number 12, Hal Ledger, 29-year-old, second-year man with the Blue Bombers. This gives Kenny Plain a little rest, because he's been going all the way, both ways. Here is Ledger going back to throw, rolling that chase by Pete Newman, and he's dropped by Pete Newman back on the eight-yard line. Sam Fernandez, 25, Menahane, 64. Menahane came up with the football. This tremendous defensive charge by the Hamilton Tiger Cats has been uh, overpowering in the latter half of the year and has been going great for them at this point. Well, you can remember the uh, Tiger Cats last year were going pretty well until Pete Newman got himself hurt, and all of a sudden Hal Ledger and Kenny Plain started completing passes. That old uh, veteran of of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, still a key man in their defensive setup. It's second down and 21 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And here's Ledger back to throw again under the goalpost, the right side to Leo Lewis, trying to shake him open. He's into the 15 and he's dropped on the 21 yard line. Leo Lewis gets back just about 12 of those yards, but it'll be third down. It was Zeno Kars along with Sam Fernandez who made the tackle. And Bud Grant sends in his punting unit on a third down and eight situation on the Winnipeg 21. Minute 54 remaining in the opening quarter. It's six to nothing for Hamilton. Scotty Henley, who scored that Hamilton touchdown. I picked up 12 like that this year. Not all that long, but almost all of them are spectacular. Charlie Shepard back on the Winnipeg seven-yard line to do the booting. Grant and Southern on the Hamilton 40. Boot by Shepard. He pounds a low ball. And Grant has to go back to his own 37. Pits the first man down. And Rod Humanuck hits him on the 52-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Holding is the call. On that one, Johnny, the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats really loaded up the line, and I think uh, they're, instead of really rushing the kicker, they're trying to stop the lineman from going downfield. Somebody a little too enthusiastic about it got caught for holding. Defensive holding is the call. This will move the ball to the 31-yard line, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers come out of there with a first down. Hal Ledger comes back into the game. And it is first and ten for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. A minute 33 remaining in the opening quarter. Six to nothing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who had the best defensive record in Canada this year, Hamilton Tiger Cats were second and a very close second. Hamilton beat Winnipeg 30 to nine uh, this year in the interlocking game. Winnipeg beat Hamilton 16 to 10 in their second meeting over the two years. First and ten now. Ledger hustling back into that. The rush is on. They pass. Oh, Leo Lewis is caught <laughs> from behind by Ron Ray. <laughs> There's no doubt about that one. Illegal interference is the official ruling on it. 
I think yes, the I would say it was a little illegal. <laughs> Like he wasn't charged with hanging. He tried his best to take his throat off. I think that uh, over enthusiastic Hamilton Rush has been a big factor in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers marching all the way from their own eight yard line and now have another first down. And they are on the Winnipeg 41. That's the third first down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they have picked up all three on penalties. Hamilton has two first downs. First and ten. Winnipeg on the Winnipeg 41. Winnipeg trails six to nothing. Quick pass on that left side. Leo Lewis turns to try to get away from Don Southern, but Southern has to bring him down in a wrestling match on the 52-yard line. Looked like Garney Hanley was getting set for the big chase on that side because had Southern not been able to contain Leo Lewis, Lewis, with his great speed, would then have had to match Garney Henley to that sideline. The yard sticks are on their way to see whether or not he has made the 10 yards necessary. You know, Don Southern that I just mentioned set a record in the Eastern Conference with 12 field goals this season. The only player who ever led the league for two successive years in pass interceptions. He had eight this year and 11 last year. There it is. And it's a first down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Forty three seconds remaining in the opening quarter of the sixty two Grey Cup Classic. Hamilton on top six to nothing. It's first and ten Winnipeg and Winnipeg on their own fifty one yard line. They've come all the way from their own eight on this march. And uh, here we have the fake to Charlie Shepard. Ledger throwing out here on the right side to Ron Lateral. No good. Being covered by number 15 Zeno Cars. Second and ten now for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Ledyard, uh, well, that's the first he has missed out of three. It is now second and uh, ten, and Ledyard comes out of the game, and Kenny Plain goes back in. There's 77 pits. Number 11 is Kenny Plain. 31, Ron Latterell. Kenny Plain in his sixth year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, outstanding player in the Grey Cup game last year. And here's Plain going back to throw out on that left side, and it is a good out there to Farrell Funston, and Funston is dropped on the 47-yard line. Number, number 10, Farrell Funston, dropped by number 22, Don Southern. Winnipeg Blue Bombers move the sticks for 12 yards. Nine seconds remaining in this opening quarter of play. Hamilton leading six to nothing, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, have done an awful lot of juggling and changing to try to find some way of uh, formulating that attack against this big uh, Eastern Championship club. First down and 10 with lateral wide to the right. Shepard goes in motion. Lewis stays in the block and Plane goes up the middle to the 40 yard line to the 35 the 25 and Johnny Henley's the only man that can catch him and he drives him out on the six yard line. Gun sounds to end the first quarter of play as Plain runs 41 yards. The telecast of this great cup game is coming to you from Toronto. The CBC and its affiliates are pleased to bring you the 1962 Grey Cup game through the courtesy of the British American Oil Company Limited, refiners of 88 and 98 gasolines. Well, Bernie Filoni, to get that 6 nothing lead, a magnificent touchdown run by Garney Hanley, what happened on it? Well, Steve, we were rolling out most of the uh, first quarter and showing a lot of motion. And on this particular play, we got a, a trap by Ellison Kelly Enabled Garney Henley to go right up the middle, 74 yards, cut to the sideline, two terrific blocks, and was on his way into the end zone for the score. And uh, Mr. Plain tried to even things up at the end of that uh, quarter as well, and that was a magnificent run by him, too. Let's see what happens in quarter number two. In the first quarter, Winnipeg had six first downs, Hamilton two. Winnipeg 54 yards rushing. Hamilton 98. 
Winnipeg completed three out of seven passes for 34 yards. Hamilton was uh, unable to complete a pass out of six thrown. No interceptions, one penalty for Winnipeg, five yards. Hamilton took four for 40 yards. No fumbles, no fumbles recovered. Four punts apiece. Winnipeg averaging 43 yards. Hamilton 40.8. Here we go now, first and goal to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Hamilton six-yard line, and Hamilton is in an 11-man line. Here is the handoff to Leo Lewis, and he is at the one, and he's over for the touchdown. Leo Lewis, number 29. Ties up the old ball game at 6-6, and Jerry James will have an opportunity to put Winnipeg ahead. Well, and that Hal Ledger, the old pinch hitter on this Winnipeg ball club in there at quarterback to set that one up. Beautiful exhibition of running by Leo Lewis, but still there's some great blocking by that Hamilton or the Winnipeg line because, as you pointed out, they were in an 11-man line. It's pretty tough to wedge a hole in there. Andre is good, and it is a 7-6 ball game. Leo Lewis, who scored 11 touchdowns for the... Winnipeg Blue Bombers this year has added the first one for Winnipeg in the Grey Cup game. The big play there following that sequence of penalties was the fact that Kenny Plain, looking very much like he did in the touchdown that won Grey Cup game last year, took off for 41 yards to set it up. Well, uh, talking about setting it up, you know, uh, Hamilton have been giving uh, what we call an outside rush. Coming in from the outside, make sure he doesn't roll out. He's been leaving that middle a little bit open. And you don't do that too often against Plain because he'll go outside down the middle like he did there. He saw that opening. He didn't waste a second. He was gone before they knew he was carrying the ball. Jerry James, the left footer, kicks off. And it comes down to Caleb. He fumbles the ball, picks it up on the 20, to the 25, to the 30. He's hit there by Henry Jensen, and he's dropped on the 36-yard line. Ken Hamlin also in there to bring him down. 49-yard boot, a 20-yard run back, and we have, after that tackle by Roger Hamlin, a first and 10 for the Winnipeg, at least for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the Hamilton 36, as Winnipeg sends Thornton out to cover Dick Easterly to the left, Jansen out to cover on the right side, they hand off to Bobby Koontz, and Koontz is hit by Jack Delvo, fumbled the ball and recovered as Delvo climbs on him quickly a second time. Elbow came up as a fullback, as a great linebacker, doing the punting, and now playing defensive end. Elbow goes at uh, 220 pounds, 25 year old from Illinois via the New York Giants. Second down and 10, and here goes Azuga rolling right. Down there to Jamie Caleb, who makes a fine catch on the 43 yard line. And he is about three yards away from a first down. Dave Burkholder, number 52, is in there to tackle number 30, Jamie Caleb. Joe Zuger completes his first pass of the afternoon. Still very hazy here, and I don't know whether it's getting any better or any worse. Joe Zuger back on his own 29-yard line. Lateral and Jansen in there to receive, and Thornton almost blocked that one. Jansen takes it on the 28, heads along the 30, fakes the lateral, hit by Ron Watton, number 44, and is dropped on the 32-yard line. You know something, Johnny? That Zuger better get those punts away a little quicker because they're starting to work on them. Herbie Gray and Thornton almost came up with a good play. Thornton didn't come too far away from blocking that one. First and 10 now for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as they line up on their own 33-yard line. And uh, Ledger, the quarterback, out on the left side to Lewis. Lewis trying to use his speed to get back to the 35, and he is dropped on the 35-yard line. Sam Fernandez, 25, came in from one side, 22 Southern on the other, and uh, Pete Newman, 74, up the middle to catch him. Leo Lewis has picked up a total of uh, 21 yards for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Newman, Minahane, uh, Barrow, Mosca, and Ray, the defensive line for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, going from right to left. Ledger, the quarterback, 
It's second and eight, and he's going down there to number 77, and he pitched hit by Fernandez and dropped on the 48-yard line. And he's got a first down. There's a flag in the play, a rough play. Oh, Ralph Goldston came in there, giving a little, a little bit extra, and looked like an elbow thrown in there, and the officials right on the spot to call it. Winnipeg Blue Bombers leading seven to six over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 12 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the first half of play. And that 15-yard roughing penalty moves the Winnipeg ball to the Hamilton 45-yard line, just between the 45 and 46. Bunston is split off to the left as Ledyard goes back to throw. Fakes one, throwing a long one down here to Bunston. Southern goes back to try to intercept well off the mark. Well, she's starting to really roll in here off the lake right now, and I've got my fears. It's not misty anymore. That's getting foggy. I wonder if they'll <laughs> even considering forgetting the halftime and going right on with the game. Really coming in here now. This morning, in a space of eight minutes from being absolutely clear, the park was absolutely covered with fog. Second down and 10 to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Hamilton 46-yard line. Jerry James is split off to the left. Lewis outside the left end, Funston. And uh, Kenny Plain going back to throw. Dumps one up the middle intended for Charlie Shepard, but it was too low, and he fielded it on a hop. So it'll be third and 10. Shepard was wide open. He had a big...